Game week, and we're looking forward to it. You know, we ended camp basically last Friday night, um, which was good. It's time for us to, to play a game and, and uh, get ready for next Monday night. It is going to be a long week. I think that's the thing that will be unique about this game is that it's uh, all the way till Monday, which I personally have not experienced before. We've, we've played on Sunday nights before. Uh, so one of the things you worry about as a head coach is make sure we get them to the game fresh. Don't leave it on the on the practice field. So we'll have a little bit different schedule this week. But the basis of it will be when we get to Thursday, Thursday will start our normal week. So that becomes your normal Tuesday, then the normal Wednesday, then the normal Thursday. And we'll try to get into a, a sequence on how we'll work uh, the entire season as far as Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and Thursday go. But uh, we'll go out tonight and practice a little bit, uh, basically get out there and stretch and do some individual work, uh, do some blitz period, do a little seven on seven, and then hit some special team situations. There'll be a lot of special team situations tonight. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll come out and basically have a, a good hard practice one that would be like a normal Tuesday practice, so that would be really your extra practice in the week. And then Wednesday we'll cut it back and, and still go out on the field but not do as much and then start our normal week on, on Thursday. Uh, we named Will Gardner the starter, which I'm sure everyone here uh, understands that. I thought Will had a very good camp. Uh, he really showed command of the offense. He did a good job in, in setting the standards of leadership um, and got the players around him to practice hard, perform well. Uh, when he speaks up, guys listen to him, and he understands the offense and what we're trying to do. And um, I thought distributed the ball well. You know, one of the biggest things about this game coming up is the ability to make good decisions and take care of the football. And certainly that's going to be a, uh, something that we'll have to do. And I have all the confidence in the world that, that he'll do that. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to be without Devontae Parker. Uh, he has a broken bone in his small uh, toe, the fifth metatarsal, and um, we'll get operated on later on today. It's a situation that came up Friday night, very late uh, in the first half of the, of the work we were doing. Just caught a simple slant, got tackled, and... Um, he felt something in there, and uh, so the medical staff made the decision to go to North Carolina uh, along with Devonte and his family. Uh, my understanding is the reason they did that was because that will be the doctor that will be at the combine in the room when they go through his medical history, and he's done a number of these same surgeries with a lot of NFL players. So uh, the timeline they give me is six to eight weeks. So we'll certainly miss him. He's a great player and, you know, he's really a fun guy to be around because he has such a good attitude and works hard and, you know, enjoys the game. So we'll certainly miss him, but we'll have to find a way to continue to improve and, and move the ball. Um, with that, I'll just open up for questions. I mean, he's a, he's a tremendous player, and what we just have to do is guys have to step up and, and perform. I think we're fortunate in the situation we're in that we have a lot of experienced players. You know, you got Eli Rogers, we got Michael Lee, we've got Kai De La Cruz, Matt Milton, you know, James Quick, guys that have played in, in games and made plays, and, you know, uh, certainly they're all going to have to contribute. Uh, we're going to have to rely on our tight ends and running backs, so it, you're never going to replace a guy like Devontae with just one guy. You've got to do it collectively with all the weapons that we have, stepping up and making more plays. Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew that by the, the way he got off the ground that something might have happened. Um, but you always hope for the best, you know, so uh, it's unfortunate. No, he just kind of landed on the on the ground um, with his foot and then got tackled. Bob, you may not know this. Do you personally pay for that surgery completely? How does that, how does that 
Yeah, the way it works with everybody is most of our players have their own insurance, and then we have right, what's called rider coverage. Um, so some of the insurance goes through the players if they have it. If they don't, then the university picks it all up. So it's not uncommon to, uh, for this to happen, you know. Um, certainly we, I, we have all the confidence in the world in our medical staff here in Louisville, one of the best medical places in the country. I think it just came down to the situation that this will be the doctor that will be in the room. Devontae has a future in, in NFL football. And for him to have the doctor that actually did the surgery speaking to all the GMs and coaches and medical staff throughout the NFL at the Combine, what better scenario could you have? How does he take the news? I mean, you wouldn't, he's such a calm guy. You know, you wouldn't know that it really bothered him that much, and obviously it does. You know, he's a great competitor and a, and a great player, but, uh, you know, he took it better than I probably did. Yeah, we probably had less tackling this year than we ever had, you know. Um, and some of that is designed by the new rules, you know, that, that are in place or the new best practices that are in place. Uh, but you do have to go out there and, and have live periods. You do have to go out there and develop your skills. And, you know, there's a lot of thoughts that if you don't do that as a coach and you don't prepare them for, for doing that, then you're not preparing them for what's going to happen in a game and you put them at more risk. Um, but when you look back at the numbers and, and the pass, because we always study, uh, we've had less injuries this camp. Unfortunately, it's just been to a real key person. How would you practice in that regard compared to previous put a number on the amount of contact? Well, we used to have, like, uh, some periods that when it wasn't scrimmage even that you did live tackle, and we really haven't done those this year where we had – what we call perimeter drill, uh, which consisted of live cutting and live tackling. Uh, we're probably down three or four from what we've done in past years. And then we had uh, really the, the last Friday night was our third live scrimmage type activities. The first one is a, what we call a scripted scrimmage, where you, you really do your teamwork, uh, your blitz pickup, your run play actions. It's just live work. And then we have a normal scrimmage. And then last Friday night was what we call a mock game, where it is scrimmage and that, but you, you, you try to hit all the situations that could come up in the game. You know? uh, and a lot of those are special teams, you know, like safe punt, where your defense has to stay out on the field, or field goal block versus a fake. I mean, it's, so there's parts of it that are scripted and parts of it that are live work, ones versus twos. It happened when you're going ones versus twos. Well, I think of that sometimes too. You know, I do. I really do. I think sometimes when you don't tackle as much, and you know, you you miss more tackles, your technique's not, not as good, um, and it's something that you know you have to kind of balance it between, you know, the the concussion issues that are there, and making sure that we're tackling properly, not putting our head down, not using the crown of our helmet. I mean, so there's a lot of teaching that goes on. Um, in as far as the tackling goes. Coach, uh, Miami is named a quarterback of uh, a new kid. Do you have any film on him at all? We got his high school film. You know, we've studied his high school film. He's a big guy that uh, he makes a lot of good throws. He looks like a guy that gets the ball out of his hand quick, has a quick release. Uh, in the video that we watched, he's not like a, a runaround guy, and, and he's more of a pocket passer. Um, but he was impressive in his high school video. Yeah, Michael uh, has not progressed as well as we thought he would initially. He still has some swelling in there. Um, he's not been able to get back out on the field yet. I think here today, tomorrow, are big days to see if he'll be available for the game. He has made progress and he has gotten better particularly the last part of the week last week uh, but we're yet to see if if he'll be available for the game so 
Not yet, but uh, you know, I, I think they'll be very motivated. And you could see the intensity on the field last year uh, during that game from both sides. We have to do a good job of keeping our poise, making sure we focus on playing the game of football. Yeah, kind of a rotation of, of, you know, Kai De La Cruz, Matt Milton, Eli can play both inside and outside, as well as Michael can. So we've just got to do a good job of, of uh, making sure that they're fresh out there and they're full speed coming off the ball. And, uh, you know, you kind of, you know, look at how we're going to utilize our tight end position and running backs. He has, yeah. He's done a good job on it, all the requirements that he had. It's how we'll start, yeah. They, they did a good job throughout the week last week. We've still been rotating guys in there, and, and some of that is not so much as who will start the game, but, you know, developing depth, which we got to continue to do. Uh, Skyler Lacey's done a nice job. He's really improved in camp. I think we got him at the right position. You know, we started him off as a tackle in spring and early this fall, but I think he'll end up being a really good guard for us at some point. Uh, Kelby Johnson's a guy we've got confidence in and it's rotated in there with the ones. So we just got to continue to have the, the rotation. Yeah. He's a really good player. You know, he's somebody that we have to contain. We've got to do a good job of setting edges with our outside linebackers and defensive ends. Our safeties are going to have to do a good job coming downhill and, and tackling. And we got to get 11 guys to the ball. I think that's the biggest thing when you when you watch him is that we're going to have to run full speed to the ball uh, because he's, you know, he's a guy that can take it the distance. I mean, I think we'll have some early that will contribute on special teams. Obviously, LJ Scott's a guy we have all the confidence in. He's got the advantage that he was here all spring long and, and throughout the uh, off season. Um, but we're going to need the freshmen to develop and get better and help us as the year goes on. Yeah, I never said he was out yet. You know, I'm hoping that he's not. You know, I'm hoping that, you know, he'll be there and, and ready to go. But... Uh, you know, you just, you got to, we got good running backs. You know, Don Brown's had a great preseason. Uh, we've learned a lot more about him on his running style and what he hits well and how well he can catch the ball out of the backfield. LJ's a very powerful guy that's really mature, knows it. Um, Lamb has shown his speed in the last uh, few days and certainly in the scrimmage the other night. He showed his speed and ability to take it the distance. He's still learning the offense. You know, him not being through spring ball has hurt him a little bit. And Radcliffe has done a real nice job for us. And, you know, in our first scrimmage, it was a scripted scrimmage, but he took a play and went 80 yards for a touchdown. So we have good players at that position. Yeah, I think we wait and see. It's so unusual to end the season with the same thing start the next season. Mm -hmm. No, I'd rather be coaching the team I'm coaching right now, you know, and, and I wasn't part of that either. You know, I think that's the thing that we've tried to make sure our players understand. They're two completely different teams. You know, we have a uh, different offense, different defense. They have a different quarterback. Uh, they do have the same defensive coordinator um, and some of the same guys back on defense, but it's totally two different teams. And you know, it's going to be a battle. We're going to go out, have to go out there and perform well, play with great intensity, and try to find a way to win the game in the fourth quarter. I don't think so. No, I think that, that the way players look at things is we got to get better each day in camp. Um, this is now game week. Now they're trying to get in a position where they can play the best game that they have and really focus on – I think if you if you go in as a football team and as a player and all you're worried about is the end result, then you then you end up losing a lot of games. But we need to worry about is playing one play at a time and our performance and doing things that give you a chance to win games. 
And that's how you win games and, and not thinking about the end result because if you do that, I don't think you play one play at a time. Yeah, we always script our first series, um, and we have one. We'll see if it changes or not, and it, and it probably will. I mean, certainly there could be different plays on it. Uh, again, we go through a process with our staff on doing that, and we did it for the mock game the other night. Um, it worked out pretty good, but it was against the twos, so, you know, we'll have to see. Yeah, I like to have a, an opening game that means something. I, I've always enjoyed that. I think that it really helps you throughout the off season. It helps you through summer. It's a real motivating factor during camp, um, and you condition for it. You get ready for it. Um, so I've always enjoyed that. Uh, as far as the conference goes, I don't know. This would be the first time I've ever had to, you know, open with a conference game. But I think some of the thoughts throughout the when you look at some of the people throughout the country too, that, that some of the thoughts are if you're if you're going to lose a game, you'd rather lose it early, where you have a chance to get back late in the season and and uh, you know find a way to get into the to the playoffs. Is there any buzz in the locker room about the uh, breaking out of the, the black uniforms? Mm. Not yet. You know, it's early. We don't play till next Monday. So I think that the biggest thing that our team needs to understand and our coaching staff and everyone needs to understand is right now it's about grinding. You know, you go through the process, and when we get to Thursday, that's going to be a hard physical Tuesday practice. Wednesday is going to be the same thing. And we really feel like those two hard practices is where you earn the right to win, how you, how you practice on the practice field. And then as Thursday comes, it gets to be more of a mental game. You know, we work more on the situations, which obviously this week's Saturday. Uh, you work more on the situations, more on your mental preparation, really understanding what you're going to see. And then after Thursday's practice, you, you continue to work on the mental part of the game, and the emotional part will take care of itself. The heat's going to be around the practice of the majority of the week. Does that change how you go about your practice? Hmm. We kind of figured that's what was going to happen. You know, we talked about it the first couple of weeks in camp that we're not really getting acclimatized here. This is too cool. It's not hot enough. It's not warm enough. I think we were lucky last week that uh, we got a couple of days that were real hot and humid, so we got used to it and we worked hard in it. Uh, one day we worked extra hard in it, and our guys did a good job. Um, but that's always going to be a factor early in the season. That's why we have to be in good condition. Uh, well, when you look at it, our leaders, you know, we got uh, Zoe does a really nice job. He's certainly a big playmaker and, and an emotional guy. Uh, I think that uh, Shelton's done a really nice job. Um, you know, our Rankins has done a great job of leadership by performing. You know, he's a guy that's pretty quiet, um, but he goes out and performs and, and plays hard. So every time you put the video on and you go through practice, you see his effort and his utilization of his technique and ability. Uh, so that's a great, great way to lead. In the secondary, T. Floyd and Gaines are doing a good job helping us. And then the, our inside backers, you know, mostly um, Burgess, Kelsey, and, and Keith Brown have been rotating in between the two positions. And they're guys that play very physical, so they help us just by the way they play. Yeah, they'll both definitely play. Coach, last year in the, in the ball game against Miami, Gaines uh, um, actually cost the team a three and out, which did not come back to hurt him because he was apparently working on the sideline. How do you um, let him be him and be verbal, but at the same time do it in a way that's not detrimental? 
Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is you, you got to be able to keep your poise and not hurt yourself. And uh, one of the, the ways to win a game is you don't beat yourself. And if you have stupid penalties and you turn the ball over, um, then you're, you're basically beating yourself and it's impossible to beat the team you're playing. So we just got to have a great week of focusing on doing things right. No, uh, uh, we're we're um, we're really impressed with Reggie. He's had a great camp. He's made a lot of really good throws. He's very mature. Um, we we have all the confidence in the world in him. We haven't made a decision yet um, whether we put him in in the second quarter or we put him in the game or where exactly we're at. We're we're gonna let the week play out before we really make that decision. I've always been really patient. It's one of my strengths. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm going to tell you that I've, I've been really impressed with Reggie, you know, and, and what we've done is kind of um, work real hard on his technique and fundamentals, uh, give him a bunch of reps, and then we've taken times where we've um, challenged him, got on him, see how he reacts to that. I love his temperament. He doesn't get he doesn't get upset. You know, um, it was one of the things I talked to him about in recruiting was that, you know, that your experience from a year ago is the best thing that could have ever happened to him, because his team, high school team, didn't have the year they thought they would have, normally would have, and as a quarterback, that's part of the deal. You know, when you don't have as much success or something goes wrong, you take the blame. And that's just the nature of the position. So uh, he's got the right temperament, and he's got the right personality. It was fun to throw him in the huddle um, with the ones and watch him and watch the players, you know, listen to him and him not be intimidated at all. I think that's probably one of the most impressive things I've seen with Reggie. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that come into that. Um, you know, we're, we have the ability to speed it up, go no huddle. We've done a pretty good job of that. Um, I think that, you know, you got to see how it goes throughout the game. We'll have, we'll have a game plan going in on what we want to, you know, how we want to start it. Uh, but certainly we have the ability to mix it up. I don't think so. I, don't, I guess we're going to find out. It, you know, it sticks you a little bit. You know, certainly he's a very, very talented guy. And, uh, you know, it'll change things around a little bit. I don't know about restriction is the right, right, right word. But certainly when you – yeah, kick returner, you know, was pretty easy. You have Gaines back there. We got Lamb back there. Um, we got James Quick back there. We feel comfortable with all three guys. I think they've done a nice job understanding the schemes that we're using. Uh, we got to work on the blocking part of it. We got to get better this week on the blocking part of it, and you know, make sure that we get them started. And we get them started. All three guys are very explosive. I hope so. I hope we can find one of those guys. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to give away our schemes now. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of, of things that he's been held to and his accountability and his education and the counseling that he's went through. Um, he knew there was an opportunity out there as long as he was held to these guidelines. And he did everything that we asked him to do. Thank you.